Jose Rodolfo Villarreal Hernandez, a.k.a. El Gato, to be placed on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. Have you ever pondered about the individuals who topped the FBI's Most Wanted list? Now on the FBI's Top 10 Most Wanted list, Omar Alexander Cardenas. This question isn't just for crime enthusiasts. It offers a glimpse into a world where justice relentlessly pursues shadows. The FBI's 10 Most Wanted list isn't a lonely place. I am looking at you now, Arnaldo Jimenez, and on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted list, with a $100,000 reward on your head. As its recent unveiling is filled with horrifying tales of individuals that would send shivers down your spine. From the man who gruesomely murdered his own wife to drug trafficking activities, these are FBI's most wanted fugitives who were never caught. Number 10, Badr Kumar, Pat H. Badr Kumar. Pat H.'s story begins in a small village nestled amidst lush green fields and whispering winds. Born to humble parents, Badr was a curious soul from the very start. As a child, Badr roamed the narrow streets of his village, his eyes wide with wonder at the world around him. He was a keen observer, soaking in every detail, from the playful antics of the village children to the rhythmic chants of the elders during evening prayers. Despite the simplicity of his surroundings, Badr's thirst for knowledge was insatiable. He spent countless hours beneath the shade of the ancient banyan tree, poring over tattered books borrowed from the village school. His favorite tales were those of adventure and bravery, where heroes embarked on daring quests to far-off lands. But life in the village was not always peaceful. Badr witnessed firsthand the struggles of his people as poverty and injustice cast a shadow over their daily lives. Determined to make a difference, he vowed to one day stand up for those who could not stand up for themselves. As Badr grew older, his ambitions soared to new heights. He dreamed of a world where every voice mattered, where justice reigned supreme. But fate had other plans in store for him. A series of unfortunate events unfolded, thrusting Badr into a world of uncertainty and danger. The seemingly ordinary night shift at a Dunkin' Donuts in Hanover, Maryland, took a horrific turn in April 2015. Badr Patel, whose full name is Badresh Kumar Chetanbhai Patel, is a man who immigrated to the United States in 1990, found himself at the center of a chilling murder investigation that would leave a local community reeling. Patel and his wife Palak Patel were regulars at the Hanover Dunkin' Donuts, working the late hours together. Their routine masked a dark secret festering beneath the surface. Arguments about their future, possibly fueled by the stress of daily life and the challenges faced by immigrants, escalated to a point of no return. On April 12, 2015, surveillance footage captured an unsettling scene. The couple entered the kitchen together, but moments later, only Patel emerged. He turned off an oven with a practiced ease, then vanished into the night, leaving an unsettling silence in his wake. The absence of staff raised concern with customers, and a nearby police officer, alerted by their unease, discovered a horrifying truth. Patel's wife lay lifeless in the back room, a victim of a brutal stabbing. Patel's escape mirrored the swiftness and brutality of the crime. He hurriedly packed his belongings, hailed a taxi to New Jersey, and spent the night at a hotel close to the airport. By morning, he had vanished without a trace. The investigation uncovered a tangled web of complications. Patel's visa had expired, raising questions about his immigration status and casting a shadow over his life in the United States of America. With potential escape routes to Canada, India, and beyond due to possible connections, Patel became a fugitive with a global reach. In 2017, the FBI intensified their efforts, adding Patel to the notorious FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives list. A hefty reward of $100,000 was offered for any information leading to his capture. Patel's case serves as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences that can erupt from unresolved domestic issues. It's a story etched in tragedy, highlighting the impact such violence can have on families and communities. As years pass, the FBI's pursuit of Patel remains relentless, 
as they increase the hefty bounty placed to offer a reward of up to anyone that can provide them with any information leading to the arrest of Badresh Kumar Chetanbhai Patel, from the initial $100,000 to the sum of $250,000 US dollars. He has become a symbol of the ongoing struggle between law and order, a fugitive who continues to elude justice. The unanswered questions surrounding his motive and current whereabouts linger, a constant reminder of the night the lights went out at the Hanover Dunkin' Donuts. Number 9. Alexis Flores Alexis Flores's story began in a neighborhood where the sun danced on the colorful walls of buildings and laughter echoed through the narrow alleys. Alexis was a child of the streets, his days spent playing kickball with friends and chasing stray cats down winding paths. Despite the chaos of his surroundings, he possessed a gentle spirit and a curious mind. From a young age, Alexis harbored a love for art. He would spend hours sketching the faces of passers-by, capturing the essence of their lives in every stroke of his pencil. His talent was undeniable, a beacon of light in a world overshadowed by hardship. But beneath the surface of his carefree existence lay a tumultuous past. Alexis had known loss and pain, his childhood scarred by the absence of a stable home and the whispers of violence that haunted his dreams. As he grew older, Alexis sought solace in his art, channeling his emotions onto canvas with every brushstroke. But the shadows of his past refused to fade, casting a long shadow over his future. Tragedy struck when Alexis found himself entangled in a web of accusations, his innocence questioned by those he trusted most. Faced with the harsh reality of a justice system stacked against him, he was forced to flee his home, leaving behind everything he held dear. Alexis Flores isn't just another fugitive. His name chills spines in Philadelphia and beyond. Born in 1975 in Honduras, although he used several other dates of births with the FBI, like July 18, 1971, July 18, 1982, September 15, 1980, and July 17, 1982. He carved a path of horror into American history with the brutal kidnapping, rape, and murder of a five-year-old girl. Flores, known by aliases like Carlos or Carlo, entered Philadelphia like a ghost. He found work and stumbled upon the kindness of Jorge Contreras, who offered him a roof over his head and a chance. This simple act of humanity would be tragically twisted. August 2000 shattered the community's peace. The lifeless body of young Iriana de Jesus, barely five years old, emerged from the basement of an abandoned apartment, the very place Flores had resided. The details were horrifying. Sexual assault, strangulation, and a callous disposal in a trash bag. Investigators pieced together a disturbing puzzle. A t-shirt with a distinct political logo, found near the body with blood stains, was identified by Conteras as belonging to Flores. By the time the community realized Iriana was missing, Flores had vanished like smoke. Twice, fate seemed to offer a chance for justice. In 2002 and 2004, Flores was arrested on unrelated charges. The second time, in 2004, DNA collection linked him directly to Iriana's murder. A chilling confirmation arrived in 2007. A DNA match cemented his connection to the crime scene. But by then, a cruel twist. Flores had already been deported back to Honduras. The FBI wasn't about to let the case go cold. They added Flores to their prestigious yet notorious 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. A hefty $100,000 reward, later increased to $250,000, was placed for information leading to his capture. Flores, fluent in both Spanish and English, is believed to have a network aiding his disappearance. The question lingers. Is he hiding in his native Honduras, or has he burrowed back into the shadows of the United States of America? The Flores case serves as a grim reminder of the monstrous acts some individuals are capable of. But it's also a testament to the unwavering pursuit of justice. Iriana's community and the FBI haven't given up. The hunt for Alexis Flores, who uses other aliases like Mario Flores, Mario Roberto Flores, Mario F. Roberto, Alex Contreras, Alexis Contreras continues. Number 8. Donald Eugene Fields II Donald Eugene Fields II, alias Don Fields, 
Donald Eugene Fields Jr. Eugene Fields, born in Kentucky on July 9, 1964, isn't a name you'd want to remember, but it's one that should serve as a stark reminder of the evils that can lurk in the shadows. This fugitive is accused of reprehensible acts, the sexual trafficking of children between 2013 and 2017. These are crimes that defy comprehension, preying on the most innocent and vulnerable members of society. The details of Fields' tactics may be shrouded in darkness, but the FBI is relentlessly piecing together the chilling puzzle to bring him to justice. In March of 2022, Fields vanished like a phantom. He skipped a court hearing, shattering the fragile trust of the justice system and leaving a trail of unanswered questions in his wake. This act of evasion sent a jolt of fear through investigators. A suspected serial trafficker, now a fugitive on the loose, the urgency to apprehend him reached a fever pitch. On May 25, 2023, a grim milestone was reached. With no sign of Fields surfacing, the FBI made a chilling announcement. Donald Eugene Fields II became the 531 person to tarnish the notorious FBI 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. This roster is a hall of shame reserved for the most dangerous criminals, a stark reminder of the threats that law enforcement tirelessly combats. The inclusion of Fields on this list signified the gravity of the situation. A predator like him couldn't be allowed to roam free any longer. A hefty $250,000 reward was offered, a desperate plea for any shred of information that could lead to his capture. Fields' story is a chilling narrative of exploitation and escape. Every day he walks free, a dark cloud hangs over innocent lives, a constant reminder of the vulnerability they face. But there's a flicker of hope in the relentless pursuit by the FBI. Their unwavering resolve sends a powerful message. Those who prey on the vulnerable will not be allowed to vanish into thin air. They will be hunted, they will be found, and they will be held accountable for their monstrous actions. This manhunt transcends the pursuit of a single individual. It's a fight for the safety of our children, the future of our communities. If you have any information, no matter how small it may seem, about Donald Eugene Fields too, please contact your local FBI office or submit a tip online at tips.fbi.gov. Even the tiniest detail could be the missing piece that brings this predator to justice and offers solace to the victims he has harmed. Number 7. Arnaldo Jimenez Born in Texas, United States of America on February 19, 1982, Arnaldo Jimenez's story isn't just a chilling headline. It's a horrifying descent from marital bliss to a scene ripped straight from a nightmare. In May 2012, Jimenez allegedly shattered what should have been one of the happiest days of his life by murdering his wife, Estela Carrera, just hours after exchanging vows. The following day, Estela was found lifeless in the bathtub of their Burbank, Illinois apartment. The pristine white of her wedding dress a stark contrast to the tragedy that had unfolded. Investigators pieced together a disturbing narrative. According to the FBI, a celebratory night likely devolved into a heated argument that turned violent. Jimenez is believed to have fatally stabbed Estella inside his black Maserati before transporting her body back to their apartment and staging the scene in the bathtub. Fleeing justice wasn't enough for Jimenez. He crossed the border into Mexico, a calculated move that threw a wrench into the investigation. Apprehending fugitives who vanish across international lines adds a significant layer of complexity to the case. Extradition processes can be lengthy and arduous, often hinting on international treaties and cooperation between countries. Despite vanishing in 2012, Arnaldo Jimenez remains a chilling reminder lurking on the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives list. A staggering $100,000 reward stands as a testament to the authorities' unwavering commitment to bringing him to justice. This case serves as a haunting illustration of the devastating consequences of domestic violence, a darkness that can lurk beneath the surface even on what's supposed to be the happiest day of someone's life. It's also a stark reminder of the challenges law enforcement faces in a globalized world where international borders can offer a temporary shield but ultimately cannot protect fugitives forever. Number 6. Wilver Palomino Wilver Palomino alias El Puerco Wilver Villegas, Wilver Palomino, 
a name whispered with fear in the shadows of the international drug trade. Palomino wasn't just a cog in the machine. He was a high-ranking member, a key figure in the National Liberation Army, ELN, a Colombian paramilitary group notorious for its drug trafficking and ruthless tactics. Born in Colombia on October 21, 1981, Palomino's rise coincided with a particularly dark chapter in Colombian history. He carved a brutal path, becoming a major player in the cocaine trade. Alongside his accomplices, they orchestrated a vast network responsible for a staggering amount of cocaine smuggled into the United States of America. This wasn't just about drugs. Palomino's influence ran deep. He was allegedly implicated in a web of criminal activity including kidnappings, assassinations, money laundering, and weapons trafficking. His grip on the underworld was undeniable. The severity of Palomino's crimes didn't go unnoticed. Law enforcement agencies in both Colombia and the United States of America launched a relentless pursuit. The United States of American government, recognizing the immense damage he caused, upped the ante with a hefty price tag, a cool $5 million reward for any information leading to his capture and conviction. This unprecedented bounty speaks volumes about the urgency to take El Puerco down. Palomino's addition to the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list sent a powerful message. International criminals operating on such a grand scale will not vanish into thin air. The hunt continues, and his capture is a critical step towards dismantling a group that has wreaked havoc and violence across countless regions. But the question remains. Will authorities bring El Puerco to justice, or will he continue to cast a long shadow over the drug trade? Only time will tell. Subscribers pick. This image reminds us of a man known as the Human Butcher, a famous London butcher known for selling human parts, or maybe not, meat sculpted into human body parts, as he claims. From meat that looks like human hand to the one that looks like private parts, this brand known as Wesker and Son Butchers at London's Smithfield Market have sold to many people. However, there's a rumor about a notorious serial killer who butchers his victims and leaves their body parts for the cops to find. But till today, no one knows his identity or anything about him. Do you think this real human butcher actually exists? And would you patronize the London butcher if you have the chance? Let us know in the comments. Number 5. Yulongkus Yulong Kus, legally known as Yulan Adene Archaga Carayas, the man who chills hearts with the alias El Porqui, Spanish for the pig, is a name synonymous with brutality in the gang underworld. With several aliases like Alexander Mendoza, Yulan Andoni Archaga Carayas, Porqui, born in February 1982, although he used some other date of births like February 13, 1982, and January 21, 1982, this Honduran gangster clawed his way to the top of the notorious MS-13 gang, a transnational criminal organization berated for its savagery. El Porqui's reign as a leader is a twisted tapestry woven with crimes like racketeering, narcotics trafficking, and a chilling proficiency with firearms. He's suspected of being the puppeteer behind a web of violence, allegedly supplying weapons, drugs, and cold hard cash to MS-13 affiliates operating within the United States of America. But his reach extends far beyond mere logistics. Authorities believe El Porqui orchestrated the deaths of numerous rival gang members, solidifying his reputation as a merciless criminal mastermind. Fearing his influence, the FBI wasn't messing around. In November 2021, they designated El Porqui as the 526 fugitive to grace their prestigious, most wanted fugitive list. This wasn't just some symbolic gesture. They upped the ante by offering a staggering $100,000 reward for any intel leading to his capture and prosecution. El Porqui, however, isn't one to go down without a fight. In 2020, he executed a daring prison escape, a testament to the unwavering loyalty he commands within MS-13. This coordinated attack showcased his power and the chilling grip the gang has on certain territories. El Porqui's alleged involvement in facilitating cocaine shipments to the United States of America via Brutal means highlights his significant impact on the global drug trade. His capture isn't just about bringing a single criminal to justice, it's about dismantling a network of violence and instability. Law enforcement agencies worldwide are working tirelessly to apprehend him, 
for his capture would be a major blow to MS-13 and a beacon of hope for terrorized communities. The United States government is offering a reward of up to the sum of 5 million U.S. dollars for information leading to the arrest and or conviction of Yulan Adene Archaga Karayas. Number 4. Omar Alexander Cardenas In the shadowy realm of Mexican drug cartels, one figure looms large. Omar Alexander Cardenas, alias El Gato. Born in 1995, his story is a chilling saga of violence and evasion that stretches from his American upbringing to his status as a wanted fugitive. Cardenas's infamy stems from a heinous crime, the murder of Jabali Dumas, a 46-year-old man gunned down in cold blood outside a Los Angeles barber shop. The execution-style killing sent shockwaves through the community, laying bare the grim reality of cartel-driven violence on American soil. Indicted in April 2020 for his role in the murder, Cardenas swiftly slipped through the fingers of law enforcement, vanishing into the murky underworld. Suspected of seeking refuge in Mexico, his known connections there provide ample cover for his continued evasion. However, whispers suggest he may still have ties to Southern California, where friends and family speculate he could be hiding in plain sight. The hunt for Cardenas is no easy task. Law enforcement faces significant hurdles in tracking down this elusive figure, suspecting he may be masquerading as a construction worker to blend seamlessly into his surroundings. Recognizing the gravity of his crimes, the FBI has put a hefty bounty on Cardenas's head, dangling a $100,000 reward for any information leading to his capture. Yet, despite the allure of the reward, Cardenas's case serves as a stark reminder of the insidious impact of gang violence on communities and the lengths to which individuals will go to evade the long arm of the law. Omar Alexander Cardenas's story began in a neighborhood where the laughter of children mingled with the aroma of homemade empanadas, a place where family was everything. Omar was a bright-eyed dreamer, his days filled with soccer matches in the park and impromptu dance parties on street corners. He was a beacon of joy in a community marked by resilience and unity. From a young age, Omar possessed a natural talent for music. His fingers danced effortlessly across the keys of an old piano, his voice rising in harmony with the melodies of his heart. Music was his refuge, a sanctuary where he could escape the hardships of his reality. But life in the city was not without its challenges. Omar knew the sting of poverty and the ache of longing for a better tomorrow. Yet he refused to let adversity dim his spirit. With determination as his guide, he set out to defy the odds stacked against him. As Omar grew older, his passion for music only deepened. He spent his nights honing his craft in smoky jazz clubs and his days hustling on the streets to make ends meet. But amidst the hustle and bustle of city life, there lingered a sense of unease. Tragedy struck when Omar found himself caught in the crosshairs of circumstance, his dreams overshadowed by the harsh realities of his environment. Faced with impossible choices, he made decisions that would alter the course of his life forever. Number 3. Alejandro Rosales Castillo Born in Arizona, United States of America on November 26, 1998, Alejandro Rosales Castillo's narrative is a chilling labyrinth of love, betrayal, and a murder that continues to baffle authorities. Castillo's plunge into notoriety stemmed from a love triangle that turned deadly, ultimately claiming the life of Sandy Lay. Investigators believe greed was the catalyst, a motive that enticed Castillo to lure Sandy in under the pretense of settling a debt. What transpired instead was a calculated, cold-blooded murder. Following the crime, Castillo alias Alexandro Castillo, along with his accomplice, vanished across the border into Mexico. This escape highlights the significant hurdles law enforcement faces in apprehending fugitives who seek refuge in foreign countries. Despite the international complications, authorities remain steadfast in their pursuit. A hefty reward of $100,000 now hangs over Castillo's head a stark symbol of their unwavering commitment to securing justice for Sandy and countless victims of violent crimes. But the story doesn't end there. Unanswered questions linger. What was the true nature of the debt Sandy was owed? How did Castillo manage to manipulate her into trusting him? 
Was there a personal connection between Castillo and Sandy's romantic partner, or was their relationship purely coincidental? As the investigation unfolds, perhaps these details will come to light, painting a more comprehensive picture of the events that led to Sandy's demise. One thing remains certain. Authorities won't rest until Castillo faces the consequences of his alleged actions. Number 2. Ruja Ignatova Let's delve into the captivating saga of Ruja Ignatova, a figure whose tale is reminiscent of a gripping thriller novel, complete with twists, turns, and a dramatic disappearance. Born in May 1980 in Bulgaria, Ignatova embarked on a journey that would ultimately lead to orchestrating one of the most colossal Ponzi schemes in modern history through the notorious one-coin cryptocurrency scam. Intriguingly, Ignatova, along with her partner in crime, Sebastian Greenwood, masterminded a scheme that promised a groundbreaking cryptocurrency, but instead ensnared thousands of unsuspecting investors across the globe, resulting in the loss of billions of dollars. Despite her impressive academic credentials and background in law, Ignatova's path veered into the realm of deceit and fraud even before the inception of OneCoin. The climax of Ignatova's narrative unfolds with her sudden disappearance in 2017, just as law enforcement agencies intensified their efforts to dismantle the fraudulent operation. Her brother Constantine, also implicated in the scam, faced arrest in 2019, providing authorities with crucial insights into the sprawling web of deceit woven by the Ignatova siblings. Adding another layer of intrigue to the story, in June 2022, Ruja Ignatova was placed on the FBI's most wanted list, with a tantalizing reward of $250,000 offered for any information leading to her capture. While speculation regarding Ignatova's fate abounds, law enforcement agencies around the globe remain steadfast in their pursuit, operating under the assumption that she is still alive. This relentless pursuit underscores the collective determination to bring Ignatova to justice for perpetrating one of the most audacious and far-reaching financial scams in recent memory. Number 1. Jose Rodao A.A.L. Hernandez Meet Jose Rodao A.A.L. Hernandez, famously known as El Gato, a prominent figure in the dark and tumultuous realm of Mexican drug cartels. Rising through the ranks of the infamous Beltran Leva cartel, Hernandez carved a path of notoriety through his involvement in drug trafficking and violence, establishing himself as a formidable force within the criminal underworld. One of the most chilling chapters in Hernandez's story is his alleged orchestration of the assassination of Juan Jesus Guerrero Chapa, a lawyer with ties to the Gulf Cartel and a crucial informant for United States of American authorities. Guerrero Chapa's murder, executed with alarming precision, sent shockwaves through those already acquainted with the grisly brutality of cartel operations, adding another layer of dread to the ongoing narco conflict. Following his indictment in April 2020, Hernandez swiftly transitioned into a life on the run, with law enforcement agencies suspecting he sought refuge in the labyrinthine networks of Mexico's underworld. Despite the formidable challenges posed by his elusive nature, Authorities have doubled down on their efforts, offering a substantial $100,000 reward for any information leading to his apprehension, underscoring the pressing need to bring him to justice and stem the tide of cartel impunity. The case of Hernandez serves as a stark reminder of the pervasive impact of cartel violence on communities, leaving scars that endure long after the headlines fade. His alleged central role in orchestrating the high-profile assassination of Guerrero Chapa underscores the imperative of relentless pursuit and prosecution in the ongoing battle against the insidious influence of organized crime. Jose Rodao A.A.L. Hernandez His story began in a place where the scent of wildflowers mingled with the warmth of the morning sun, a place where the laughter of children echoed through the cobblestone streets. Jose was a dreamer his eyes alight with curiosity and wonder at the world around him. From a young age, he found solace in the pages of old books, losing himself in tales of adventure and far-off lands. But amidst the tranquility of his village, there lurked shadows of hardship and uncertainty. Despite the challenges he faced, 
Jose remained steadfast in his pursuit of knowledge and understanding. He spent his days exploring the hidden corners of his village, his imagination soaring with each new discovery. But as he grew older, the weight of responsibility began to bear down upon him. Tragedy struck when Jose's family fell upon hard times, their once prosperous farm threatened by drought and famine. Forced to confront the harsh realities of life, Jose found himself standing at a crossroads, torn between duty and desire. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.